got a great challenge this week, a week of Thanksgiving, short week. Uh, both of us have a, a short week, a quick turnaround. Got back here at a, at a really a good time on uh, Saturday evening um, so that our guys could get a good night of rest and turn right around and had a good start to our week uh, last week and as I, or uh, last night and as I said last week, we had to modify our, our schedule this week to get these guys um, uh, refocused and, and make sure that we're uh, uh, recovered and healthy and uh, ready to play fast. Um, cause we got a fast athletic uh, TCU team that's um, again played uh, last several games and played well. Had a couple of um, uh, tough losses, uh, both to Tech and uh, to Texas, where it comes down to the last drive of both of those games. Uh, and uh, lost 29-26 to Texas, and I got after Baylor pretty good last week, and uh, lost a tough one to Texas Tech uh, the week uh, prior to that. But um, a team that's um, got tremendous, tremendous um, uh, skill, um, uh, a lot of confidence, a team that's played in the national championship uh, just last year, and uh, they got after us pretty good. So um, really excited about where we're at. Again, I'll just give you a quick update um, with Dylan and Jalil. Uh, I feel like both those guys will, if they continue to progress throughout the week, that they'll be available uh, this weekend. So open it up uh, for questions. Eric Bailey. Brent, you're going to honor seniors on Saturday or Friday, excuse me. Uh, how special, you know, you're, all of them are special, but how special is this group that transitioned through the coaching staff like Drake, Jordan Kelly, guys like that that played with a different coaching staff, mm -hmm. bit, bought into your system, and now you're going to honor them with their last games? Yeah, they're the um, foundation for the success that we've uh, experienced this year. Uh, incredibly thankful for them, their leadership, their belief, all the work that they've put in, a lot of sacrifice. Again, that's a group of guys that are – uh, incredibly heavily invested in this program and certainly uh, in the locker room and their teammates and certainly their opportunity. So uh, you know, I got a great perspective and again, a, a tremendous amount of thankfulness for them. And uh, again, it'll be a, an emotional week uh, for several of them, senior day. Uh, for those who never participated in senior day, it's a very emotional time and it really kind of hits them uh, in the face when they see their mom and dad or their, whoever they're um, the village uh, that they have might be out there on the field and it kind of can hit you in the face pretty quick but you know that'll be a challenge that you know that's part of my responsibility to make sure that the help them not to allow the you know their emotions hijack uh, the moment you know because this is they got to turn around and play a really tough physical game that's there's a mental uh, challenge and a physical uh, challenge that the game requires that uh, you know, several moments later after having that moment that they're going to have to be ready to play. But uh, really, really proud and thankful for this group of guys. Thank you, Brent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brent, I know you may not want to totally reflect this far back, but a year ago today you guys are coming off a game where you get bowl eligible heading into your final regular season game. I'm wondering if you can sort of from your perspective say what you're proudest of or how you think the program just overall last year end of the season regular season to now just what's what's improved what's changed what do you like about where things are now you know that's a pretty broad question um i really um i got perspective i probably you know always evaluate things after you know uh, the season uh i just have always believe that continue to prove it continue to get better you know you know success is not a straight line in case anybody didn't realize that success is never a straight line and uh, again, I've experienced tremendous success at, a, at the very highest level, and it's never been a straight line. And so I think having that right perspective um, is important, even coming off a game where uh, tough, tough hard-fought victory, where maybe, again, we uh, had to overcome several things, um, you know, whether it's losing our quarterback, not having him in the second half, or uh, not fitting gaps right pretty consistently for most of the day uh, with our linebackers and um, uh, but still finding a way to win. So the improvement's been, again, it's been incremental uh, in most ways and, uh, and we'll, we'll never stop improving, you know, as a staff uh, and how I lead and how our players play. My vision is for us to continually, you know, invest and be committed to the improvement process. And so 
there's certainly several benchmarks that you know where you can say, okay, there we're better here. And uh, whether you start with the with the obvious with your record, or uh, and again, somebody you just watch how guys play, you know. But uh, you know, consistency is what I'm always looking for. And when you don't have it, you're always disappointed. And and for us to be uh, the kind of program that I envision, um, that it is an example in college football uh, and a model of college football. Uh, the hardest thing to do um, in, in intercollegiate athletics is to have consistency, and that's what we all want. That's the best players I've coached, the best units I've coached. If they've been something, they've been consistent. Our mindset's been great. Uh, our attitude and our willing to invest has been great. Uh, but you know, I'm always looking again for that consistency piece. But again, I, I think uh, you know the confidence of our players, the leadership in our locker room. Um, again, I, I said this several times, but a year ago, we did have some guys that were natural leaders, uh, but there were so many of them, everything was, was brand new for them. I'm not sure if uh, they were able to be the best version of themselves as leaders. Um, uh, that's just the natural uh, transition, you know, but we still had great leadership a year ago, but I think that um, there's more uh, depth to that leadership. And again, just we're, again, we're more physical, we're more confident, you know, we've been a little more aggressive. Uh, sometimes people use different, everybody has a, a narrative, you know, and you can flip it however you want and say, well, we haven't made improvement here or there. You know, I'm sure you can find it. I don't really look at uh, all of that. I just watch how we do what we do. Um, uh, again, I'm, my job is to make sure we've got guys that are bought in. And, I really believe that we have that and that we have great continuity you know, with our staff and all of our different uh, places within our staff, all the different programs within our staff. So um, everybody's a little bit better uh, at what they're doing. Nobody's perfect, but we're always uh, pushing for more. Brent? Yeah, Brent, you're three and two now in close games this year. Last year, 0 and 5. Year before you got here, OU was 6 and 1. A lot of people say close games is not a talent or a skill, it's just happenstance. And the pendulum will end up pretty close to 500 over time. Do you believe that? And if not, what is it about a team that makes them successful in close games? Well, I mean, you gotta be good at what you're doing. I don't think it's just luck. I, um, I really believe that. And, um, you know, I think it's confidence in those uh, stressful moments. And I certainly be, and believe in uh, you know, uh, coaches have responsibilities, tremendous responsibilities. This is the player's game. It's still, you know, we put them in position to be successful. And you got to make plays. You, you know, sometimes you're on the wrong side of it, and they, may, they were a little bit better at it than you were. That's the game of football. Uh, but, uh, you know, for us to be, again, I just referenced consistency. I mean, you want to be you know, well above 500 in whether or not it works itself through itself out through time um, you know that's that's never okay for us uh, I can promise you but I think being more physical more sure of yourselves more precise more detailed um, this is a game of performance and execution and uh, you know the awareness and uh, you know the confidence the precision all of those things are important but you know there's lots of different moments you know that you can look at uh, that are going to put you on the right side of winning and losing and uh, you know, the things that like turnovers and penalties are things that are, are very real. Um, uh, and, but also um, putting guys in the right position is, is a part of it as well. I think all of it matters. And, uh, you know, uh, sometimes it comes down to those that last drive of the game. But really, I always look back, and just like we did even last week, even through victory. How did we get to this point? You know, I don't, uh, you know, again, this is really obvious. Uh, just this last week, uh, we, we, we did a poor job at stopping the run. Uh, and it's really um, something to be, oh, the D-line got what That didn't happen. Actually, it didn't happen. That's not true. Uh, Kansas, maybe. Uh, this week, just the linebackers not being where they're supposed to be. And, um, and so that's pretty obvious why the game was close. But I look back at, you know, that third and medium, you know, the fourth and two. Uh, on touchdown drives, where we're we're in good calls, we got to execute. We got to do a better job coaching them, and we got to do a better job. We got to execute. You got to play with, with your eyes. You got to adjust the formation. 
And if you do that, you get off the field and then they don't score touchdowns and we get the ball back at midfield because they went for it on fourth and two. And, and we're going to score right before half instead of letting them score right before half. And those are the things I look for, not the obvious things. The obvious things are, you know, we got to work on those. That's, um, that goes without saying. But I think, I think that, making sure that we do a great job, even through victory, of trying to always coach and get our guys better. Um, but everything matters, you know, coaching matters, you know, having good players matters, being physical matters, being sure of yourself matters, the fundamentals, the details. The precision, the anticipation, all, everything matters. And, uh, you know, so we're a little better than what we were. Uh, we were uh, terrible uh, a week, a year ago. Um, I was terrible. Everybody, you know, it's all terrible. It's all bad. And, uh, you know, but there's a big difference between winning and losing. And uh, I know what losing feels like. I know what winning feels like. They don't feel anything remotely the same. And, uh, and so that's kind of what I think. George. Uh, yeah, Brent, uh, another missed field goal on Saturday. What happened with that, and why do you think that unit's maybe been just inconsistent at times this year? Is it one thing, or is it multiple things that have gone wrong? Yeah, we got to get a little better with our um, confidence and our fundamentals. Uh, at kicking, you know, we've been too inconsistent there. And um, you know, right now, again, we, we kick multiple guys uh, in practice. And, uh, you know, Zach's, Zach's been our most consistent. So, you know, just like a, a quarterback, if a quarterback's lacking accuracy, he's just got to get better. You know, you got to throw it on time. You know, sometimes it's an instinct, instinctual thing for a quarterback. Sometimes it's a, you know, it's a mechanics thing. You know, we just got to get better. Has Gavin um, Marshall been a part of that at all? And, and um, he has. He's been hurt most of the year. Okay. Unavailable. <coughs> Go to Ryan Chat. You talked about a consistency. Billy's been really consistent for you guys in the back end. What, what kind of growth have you seen from him from just game one this year to now to be that dude for you guys every week? I'm kind of giggling because I've seen a lot. And uh, Billy's one of the most quiet people we have in our locker room. But he's one that there's nobody that's more highly invested than Billy. Billy um, loves Oklahoma. He loves to play. Uh, he's really hard on himself. Puts a tremendous amount on himself. Um, I've seen him grow as a leader this year and uh, was named a permanent captain, voted by his, his uh, teammates uh, yesterday and uh, got up in front of the guys at practice. And, and it was awesome uh, to hear him because I'm always trying to uh, poke him and get him uh, to respond and have his he teammates hear him because they, the players have tremendous respect for him. Uh, but uh, and he's become a much better player and he has so much more growth. And he'd be, he'd be the first one to tell you, he's so far from a, a polished product. Um, but he has a chance to be great uh, because of his, uh, his work ethic, his attention to detail, his love for the game. Um, again and again, he's a zone worst critic. Uh, really, really hard on himself. But he wants to serve his team well, wants to serve his coaches well. Super easy to coach, always locked in. Uh, he's always ready. It's been a lot of fun to see him, again, grow and mature. But there, uh, I, I say this, um, again, he's played uh, really well this year. All of his best football is still in front of him. Left side, James. You know, Brent, your defense had a tough day, but at the end of the third quarter, the fourth quarter, they came through and got stops. Yeah. What does that tell you about the growth? Well, yeah, no, again, we made some, some slight adjustments. A lot of it just reaffirmed, hey, fellas, here's what they're doing, and uh, here's where we got to be. We got a little better in the second half. They're still, we gave up a couple of explosive runs. It takes one guy. You in in the A gap, you in in the C gap, you're not the B gap. Everybody else can be where they're supposed to be, playing with the discipline that they're supposed to play with. You know, if the three technique is supposed to take on a double team, we can't ask him to swim the guy and go make the play in the C gap. You, you know what's going in the C. You got to take on the double team. Let me get this other guy squared away. But really felt like just putting all these fingers in all these different holes that were leaking. <coughs> all right, I got this one, man. You got to get this one. And this, and this uh, wasn't good. But at halftime, just I thought the second half we played a little better. I think they had maybe six drives in the second half. I think we forced three punts, we had two turnovers, gave up a touchdown drive. That's a pretty good half. Uh, two of the turnovers were. were uh, one was converted into a touchdown. One we ran back for a touchdown. Again, we had three, I 
think that three three and outs, two three and outs, maybe a five and out, and uh, and then we gave up a touchdown drive. I go back and look at the, the fourth down play on the touchdown drive, and you know, you know, uh, there was a few things that new wrinkles uh, that they had that are going to happen every single week. That wasn't one of them, and uh, we got to be better there and to to prevent the touchdown. But uh, you know, times our tackling was really terrible, and um, but I thought our guys played with good resolve and toughness. Again, you. You don't overcome the things that we overcome if, if, if you don't have tough guys. And what I love, these guys, man, they laid on the line. Uh, super coachable, nobody pointing fingers, nobody blaming. Guys taking responsibility, owning it. So it takes that before you can get the result that you have. Uh, you know, in the first half, I thought we were on our heels. Again, a little bit better. A couple of those explosive runs are really disappointing. We had a safety that is in a wrong rotation one time, and they, they got us for uh, – 25, 28 yarder uh, there in the second half. Again, like I said, you, you ain't there. That's what they're going to run, and that's it, it's, it's not going to be good. And uh, but um, I think that's what it is. Again, resolve, toughness, investment, belief, uh, leadership, uh, guys that care. I think that showed up. And, um, and again, it's you look around college football. I think you, you know. I sometimes again, I know we cover just the Sooners, but everybody here loves uh, collegiate athletics and follows college football. Several games against opponents that maybe uh, on paper are not quite as good. If you want to call them inferior, whatever you want to call them, but expectation is that you manhandle. If that's Michigan and Maryland, whatever it is, if it's uh, you know why is this team hanging around? If it's you know uh, I don't want to go through and everybody gets all sensitive and but that's the game. You know it's the game. It's a uh, uh, it's a long season and it's hard to. You know, always beat your best. I mean, uh, you know, I still don't think we've been at our best yet. You know, and and that's disappointing too. But uh, that's not what you're asking. And just fighting, on, finding a way. And again, having you know, we played several uh, you know tough games this year. Uh, sometimes the end result looks a little easier than what it was. But whether again that starts back to you know if that's Cincinnati, if that's SMU, if that's Texas. Uh, you know, we were in some battles and we came on the wrong side of it, but we had chances to win in both the, you know, the Kansas, the Oklahoma State game, uh, you know, the UCF game. I mean, they, we've had a bunch of tough games and we've been a little better. And so through all that, it creates and supports belief and uh, find a way to get it done. Again, we've been a gritty, a tough group. With, again, these guys love each other, tremendously invested, and so they're not going to just surrender and, you know, give in when things ain't going right especially when it's exactly opposite of what you prepared, even though, you know, I'm always, you know, you're going to get their best. They play great at home. Uh, you know, if we don't do X, Y, and Z the right way all the time, you know, be the model consistent, they're going to, you know, this game's going to punish you. So um, really, again, they responded good, and uh, our guys are in a great place. I mean, this, this late in the season, I, I love watching these guys. They come to the facility every day, put in time on their own, they like it, and they like each other. Uh, they have good, um, strong relationships with their coaches. It's a great environment for them to come into every day. I'm not promoting and toting that. I just watch it. And if it's not there, I'm not going to say it. Uh, but they, it's a healthy, uh, connected place where that's a lot of fun. These guys like to practice. they got great juice and energy. They make each other better. There ain't no dead batteries in that locker room. And that's what I like. Uh, these are guys that they buy into the iron sharpens iron. It's, uh, you know, and they're enjoying their time together, and they know it's winding down. Eli, Brent, in terms of you know some of the gap sound and all that, et cetera, mm -hmm. what did you see when you, you got to watch it over and it was a six-day turnaround? <laughs> I watched this. I mean, I watched it on the plane. It's exactly what I watched out on the field. So I'm not surprised. We again, we every once in a while we kind of found our way into the right spot. We'd stop them, and then you know, then not there. Next thing you know, it's you know, it's eight, ten. 12-yard game, whatever it was. I, I think we had, uh, you know, four runs. Uh, I think it's four, maybe it was five, 20 yards plus. So it was not good defense. Is that something I say alarm bells? Not no, but, but no. It's, it's one guy. Bad. You know, it's one guy, and it's not. It's not alarm. I don't. I don't. I, I was actually after you want to know what I really felt. True serum is. I felt more relieved. You know, okay, it was not fit. It wasn't <coughs> somebody getting their butt whooped. Get your, your butt whooped. You don't like it. That's a, uh, 
you know, your pride's always hurt a little bit when you're invested and you're a coach. And, oh, but yeah, that's my guys. You know, that's a, it matters. They're all uh, my guys, but a, a, a position group that you're, uh, you know, involved in, deeply invested in every single day. Uh, but, you know, it wasn't, and again, that's just wasn't some guy getting, uh, you know, ran through as much. And we missed tackles, uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, but, you know, just not being in the right fits, most of it. So, no, no alarm. Again, that's, you know, let's go back and let's wrap it again, you know. Throw a guy here and they swap a guy there. Here comes the gaps and you got to know who's with you. That's a big part of it. You got some, a few young guys um, that maybe aren't quite as sure sometimes, or at least this last week, who's got exactly with them. You know, when you know who's with you, okay, they motion that and this guy's with me, so now I can fall back to this guy. And we weren't very good at it. So, uh, so those are things that a six day turnaround you feel like you can get. Yeah, I mean, because I got a body work. If we've had the problem all, all year, um, that would be another, and we couldn't find the ball. Uh, sometimes, again, we just, um, uh, you know, but if we could find the ball all year, um, behind the ball, or we, we lacked instincts and those kind of things. That would be an issue. That's a hard thing to fix. But uh, we got the right guys for that question. Go to Bob. Yeah, Brent, Woody's been there the entire season, but the depth at the other spot, not, not necessarily the quality of play, but just guys staying healthy and being available. How much of a struggle has that been, and how are Gentry and I looking going into this week? Yeah, and Kanai was, you know, he was good last week, but uh, Gentry's back in practice yesterday. So, you know, that hasn't been ideal, you know. Um, and going into the year, I, I talked about that position group not having much experience, and then you know we've been uh, snake that there was just some you no know, uh, real long-term injuries other than Jaden Rowe, uh, and uh, you know, but man, that group has been other than Woody, and Woody's been fantastic, uh, and he's been great in every way you would want an older guy to be. But uh, but the rest of the group is you know when they've been available been pretty pretty good and uh, you know but continuity and getting the chemistry and getting into a good rhythm and and then getting better because you're out you're available and so you're practicing all those things the things that it takes to get better uh, has been obviously lacking top to bottom. Jesse, hey Brent, you, you talked about that linebacker group a little bit. I wanted to ask you about Kobe McKenzie. Got some, uh, some snaps the last couple of weeks. Maybe where have you seen him grow in that linebacker room as a whole? How have you maybe seen it grow and, and change throughout the season? Well, again, um, Danny's kind of led the way uh, for the group, and you have several either first term, first year players. Really, again, Canick played a little bit uh, the year before, but really, again, he's remember he's been an offensive player his whole life, and um, so he's learned. And then he switched linebacker positions uh, to maybe better suit his skill set and uh, so you got one veteran there in uh, Danny and he's been fantastic of uh, everything about Danny stuff so we can't brag on him uh, enough and what he has meant to uh, the defense and the, the group uh, his leadership and he's done a complete he's not only he's always been an emotional guy that likes to play and uh, a little edgy which you kind of like uh, but I mean he has matured his, per, his perception, um, or perspective rather, and his uh, his investment in the guys around him. And to me, that's what I always look at, his selflessness, his commitment, and his investment, you know, bringing guys with him uh, along the way. Um, he's constantly challenging players. There's got plenty of great leaders, you know, but again, leadership is not a position. That's not a title, it's action. And uh, man, he's been all about it. I can't say enough about you know what he has been for that group. As you asked me about the group overall, um, the rest of the guys I love um, again. Their willingness to be coached, their willingness to be led, their willingness to invest, um, their willingness to strain. And so whether it's Desan, it's you know it's Colby, uh, or, or Kobe, or uh, Kendall Dolby, uh, you know Kip Lewis and his emergence, uh, Jerry Canick. Uh, Shane Witter, Lewis Carter. Uh, we lost Phil Pachotti uh, to start the year uh, to an ACL, but and uh, 
So and I think we've had, because of injuries, we've had to put some other guys over there. I wish Peyton was 100% healthy, you know, because he's between safety and was playing some cheetah. But it's so hard, and you're not available, and you're not practicing as much. And uh, so he's kind of been nagged a little bit. But uh, real proud of the group. And we got a lot of growth, a lot to improve and get better at. And we're, not, you know, we're close to, you know, until we get three first team, you know, all league, three first team all Americans, you know, I'm never going to be happy. Uh, but I also got the right perspective, and I'm thankful. Uh, this is a group of dudes that they like it. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm thankful for that and proud of them. And these, this is a group, I and mean, they, they understand they got to be the backbone of the locker room. Not, and we've got other great leaders, and uh, but that's my, that's always been my uh, uh, vision is, is the linebackers. They, they've got to take that kind of responsibility, have those kinds of shoulders, and uh, the team needs to follow their lead. And so I have a very emotional investment in, in that group uh, as well uh, as a, just a longtime position coach there uh, along with Ted. So uh, I think it, it's a group that, you know, just like all young players, there's going to be some great moments and some tough moments and learning opportunity. And but Kobe's had a Kobe's done a great job. You know, he's again he went through some struggle as a freshman, uh, towards growing uh, in, in camp. Came in as as a mid year. That was a, probably a struggle. So you miss several weeks. It's hard to have any opportunity to show what you can do, and it's hard once the season starts and the, the reps are limited. You you don't get the same reps. You know, you gotta you know, then. Sometimes it's, you just got to be um, ready when you get an opportunity. And but uh, I've been real proud of him. He's a he's his mental part of the game is actually really good, and um, he takes full responsibility. A lot of young guys they don't want to you know look at the man in the mirror, and uh, and they allow themselves to, to beat themselves every day or or occasionally, and uh, or they let external factors affect them. And, uh, but Kobe's got tremendous maturity when it comes to those things. And um, he's one of the smartest linebackers we have. And, now, and he's improved tremendously, fundamentally. You know, he'd fall down a lot, uh, you know, 10 months ago. And uh, so he's got quicker with his feet, and, and with his balance, and his blitz timing, and his ability to strike. And, and he's got tremendous upside, too. You know, he's got a high, high ceiling uh, still in front of him as well. But, guy that comes in on his own a lot and uh, you know, lets you coach him hard and takes responsibility. So proud of him, you know, and as well as that entire group. Uh, really going to be a tremendous group. And they really like each other. They got great chemistry. Uh, they're a reflection of the growth and uh, the maturity of our football team. You know, the selflessness, the commitment, uh, the love and trust and respect for everybody, both sides of the ball, all three phases. This is a team that, that knows each other. And, uh, and that's a group that they got a great, great bond. Far right, second row, Justin Martinez. Hey, Brian, you, you throw out his name, but Kendall Dolby seems to really continue to make the most of his opportunities. Just when you see him and the strides that he's made since getting here, just what really stands out about him? Well, I just I giggle. He got a great, great spirit. He loves to play and compete. And again, he uh, because of some of the concerns that we had from a depth standpoint at corner, that's kind of where we put him until things could work itself out, and then we got some injuries uh, inside and so we said well we, we we need to we knew he could be a player uh, we didn't feel like we need him there as much as we needed him uh, and would be playing really meaningful reps out of corner but uh, he's still just he's figuring everything out and man I've been really uh, excited about him he, as you have seen he's a bullet you know and, and he knows what he's doing man he can if it's see ball get ball in the, in the open field or in his coverage technique you know yeah, you're gonna always have some tough moments. So uh, uh, as soon as I say something good about somebody, I mean, somebody will want to probably, you know, say, well, what about that play? We we've corrected that. Uh, but uh, really been proud of him. Players love him because he, he plays wide open, doesn't say a whole lot, uh, but he shows up every every day. One of our best practice players. He just loves to compete. That's probably the best uh, trait that he has. And then his second best trait is uh, his instincts. Um, and then he's a very skilled player, and then he plays big. You know, he's not, I don't know what is, he's probably five, uh, ten and a half, five eleven, and probably 178, 182 pounds. But man, he plays like he's 205, and he thinks he's 6'5. And uh, so he's fearless, got a lot of courage, uh, really tough kid.
guy. Let's go to Joe Masato. Brent, we obviously saw Jackson Arnold on, on Saturday, but what have you seen from him, you know, midweek, Monday through Friday, as far as how he's gotten better, both on the field or, you know, maturity-wise, just kind of learning? Yeah, just I would say that the number one thing that stands out for me uh, as I uh, watch him and his growth is just his consistency. Um, you know, he's never too high, never too low. He's just always the same guy every day. He uh, likes to compete, you know, makes the most of his opportunity, values his opportunity, uh, respects the game and what it takes to develop. So he's got great work ethic. And, uh, you know, he understands as much as anybody you're going to get what you earn. So Mason. Brent, uh, how close was Tyler Guyton to being available, and do you expect to have him back? Yeah, I think he was back, you know, uh, Jake just did a great job, you know, so uh, there's something to that too. You know, Jake's uh, done a really good job and made the most of his opportunity, so uh, I think it's more about Jake than it was about Tyler, but he's available. So it's on the half. Um, I think that's easy, again, narrative. When, when you're not stopping a run, it's going to be hard. They're third and medium a lot. We didn't get them, uh, you know, third and long a whole lot. And uh, so there's that this last week. And, um, uh, you know, I look at, I think overall, you know, just a little over 30%, you know, sack rate. So some of the, or 30% uh, uh, conversion rate, uh, third downs, and then we had some fourth and twos and threes. So sometimes, that, and then you look at that, and they're running the ball. How many times they run the ball in third down? You know, I think there's always a story behind it. I think the easy ones, oh, look, this final statute, there's no sacks. They must suck. <laughs> or you just watch the game and figure out, okay, I see, you know, either we're not stopping the run, and next thing you know, it's a lot of third and shorts and the fourth and shorts, so you're not going to get a lot of seven-step drop. Or maybe it is a team that's committed to run three-man routes and seven-man protections, and so uh, last I checked, seven against four is hard, and because uh, people do respect um, uh, things that we do, uh, we're not getting a bunch of five on four uh, at all. Uh, not in, in true drop back, you know, uh, you know, protection. And then again, you look at Oklahoma State. Uh, you know, is that our last three games? BYU, West Virginia, Oklahoma State. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, it's like eighty percent of their their, their throws were under 2.5 seconds. So uh, a sack rating in the NFL, anything under 2.5 seconds is going to be about 10%. Uh, really, you're not going to get there. So that's all by design. And uh, so you have that, you know, maybe. Maybe if you look at the, the third down that we got, a, uh, McVicker's got a, a PI on, it. there's a three-step drop uh, off of an RPO. So it's a called run. So the D-line's getting a reach block, not a not a pass set. He's getting it's third and seven, third and eight. And so he's getting a reach block, a base block. So he's going to play run technique because that's what he got. So he's not going to get a sack. And then they take the ball and they throw it up. So it's counted as a pass. Oh, we didn't get a sack. Where's the pressure? You know, you're not going to get it. So, you know, um, that's what I would say to all that. And um, uh, there's a lot, again, I, I, we, don't, we got a lot to get better. We got to get better at everything. Pass rush, technique, run, run defense, all of this stuff. You know, we got to get better at. And I think it all matters. And then some of it's the scheme and the people are uh, presenting, and then some of it's your your lack of success early downs. That's what I, I think this last week. Uh, you know, and then we can never. Sometimes you you get a, a lead on some guys, and then you put you put people in a pinch, and you get leads on people. Now they gotta uh, when you get good game control, you put pressure on the other side of the ball. Uh, on an opposing offense, and now they they got to go back and chunk it a lot. And uh, so we haven't really been uh, able to do that here recently, you know, either. So everything matters. It all is is part of it. And uh, we're better there, not be not good enough. And uh, uh, nobody here is satisfied with any of it. But uh, proud of our guys and their work and their fight. But I also have perspective on. A lot of people understand the game. You understand the game, you'll you, 
game. You watch the game, not just look at the final stats. I'm not pointing, saying you, but you're just reporting a, a, an obvious, uh, you know, stat. And, but game control matters too. And uh, then you get in good game control. Uh, you put people in a, in a more of a, uh, a position where it's obvious they got to, you can pin your, your ears back a little bit. But uh, worth getting things like, you know, again, seven man protection, screens, quick shallows, RPOs, things like that too. Uh, sprint outs, things like that's hard to get sacks on. They're moving, changing launch point. They, that's why they do it, because they know we're aggressive and things like that. Cliff, you had one, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, TCU's got a freshman QB, Josh Hoover, over 300 yards for the last three games. They've also got a new weapon, a 6'7 tight end, Jared Wiley. Uh, huge game last week, three pretty good games in a row. Uh, two of 400 yard games. Nice defense. Yeah, this is going to test us in every way. Um, quarterback's playing fantastic. Again, two 400 plus yard games, too. I think he's thrown for uh, nine touchdowns. And, uh, just been fantastic, you know, averaging, uh, you know, 300 plus yards a game, he's, he's been fantastic. So they've done a great job. Receivers, they got really good receivers. Their running game's been good, uh, which gives them opportunity to tie in six foot seven. I uh, got a big six five receiver uh, as well. And, uh, you know, uh, really like Bailey. Now he's running downhill and he's very explosive. Uh, he's a home run hitter uh, as well. They're blocking up front good and protecting the quarterback well. He's making really good decisions. They're putting him in position to be successful. Uh, so, um, you know, the tight end's great, three's great. You know, they, uh, they're, again, that's a team that um, they've done a good job, you know, uh, you know, with the group of guys they have, and they turned over a lot of guys. They, you know, having tremendous, tremendous, you know, production. Uh, I think three had 11 catches against Texas a couple weeks ago. And uh, so um, they've got really, really good players. Second row, left side, John. Brent, uh, if Jackson does have to be the guy on Saturday, how, how important is he gets this week where you guys can game plan for him and he gets the week as the guy? How important is that? I think, you know, Jeff does a good job of when Jackson gets, the, you know, are getting the first and second team guy are getting virtually the same amount of reps. And so, um, you know, the things that we're asking him to do, he's good at. You know, we don't have to. You know, Jackson's in, let's do this. You know, you're, uh, there's some things that maybe he might uh, be good at, but you're, I mean, the game plan is going to be the game plan based on the things that you're going to see from the opponent. So, uh, and then the things that we do every single week. So, it's important that he has those things down, you know, so we can go execute, you know, the offense and, and still take advantage of his best skill sets. But, uh, you know, I think him and Dylan are very, very similar. Anyways, I don't think, okay, well, this guy's a runner, and this guy's a thrower, and this can't, you know, he can't throw, this guy can't throw. We don't have that problem with those two guys. Got a few on the way back in the middle. John Hoover. Yeah, Brent, I wanted to, uh, you talked about Dylan being a captain, you talked about uh, Danny and Woody. I wanted to give you a chance to brag on the other four captains to their permanent captains, Ethan and Dylan and McKay and, and Drake, and what qualities those guys have. Well, again, and that's that's from their, their teammates. They're just again model of consistency, highly invested guys, and and sometimes people say, well, how come about these other guys? And you know, it's not a reflection on anybody else. These are just the guys that they were the they got the most uh, votes. But consistency, buy-in, passion, love for the game, love for their university, love for their teammates. They've been amazing, you know. They make everybody around them better. Uh, they got the kind of toughness uh, that you want your program to be all about. They value their opportunity every single day. They know that their time is limited and their roles are important and their platform is important and uh, their influence is important. So again, uh, all the selfless traits that you gotta have, the work ethic, the toughness, the, the ability to persevere and endure uh, is something I never take lightly. Uh, it's easy to be a leader a day here, a day there. When you feel good, these are guys that show up uh, no matter what the circumstances are, you know, uh, there that's a group of guys that will move the coach out of the way and say, I got this coach. And uh, you don't always have that, and, and but we have it. And uh, so I, I got tremendous, uh, again, like I said uh, uh, earlier, thankfulness for that group of guys. Um, again, they're, they're uh, 
their work ethic, their consistency, uh, and, and their ability just to um, be a light, sometimes in some dark moments too. And, uh, you know, uh, they've not flinched, and uh, they've been the model of what you want from a ability to, to overcome. And like I said, this team, and, and to me, I, I believe you're, you know, that you're really, um, your real value comes from you know what you overcome, not what you become. Uh, first team all league, all American, get drafted. You know those are things that you become. I think it is what guys overcome that really um, separates or defines you or develops you. And that's a group of guys. They all have a a story. You see the glory of being you know a permanent captain, but there's a story behind all of them. Uh, and I love that about them. And that's what I love about you know being a part of a locker room. Okay, let's go to Holden. Yeah, Brent, uh, obviously TCU just needs one win to become bowl eligible. What are you expecting from, from them on Friday? The same thing if, if they were already bowl eligible, a team that plays with pride, a team that's well prepared and well coached, a team that's got good athletes, a team that's going to play with great effort, uh, no different. You know, I don't think, oh, okay, well, this is for bowl eligibility. Game one's bowl eligibility, right, the way it is today. You know, you don't, okay, now we're going to do our best. No, I don't think that. They're going to be a group that's highly motivated. They come in with great passion and energy. Again, we get everybody's best. Uh, this is Oklahoma. It's great. It's going to be an amazing environment. They'll be juiced uh, and fired up like everybody that comes to, you know, Owen Field. And uh, our job is to focus on us, uh, prepare as best as we can prepare, have a great week of practice, uh, get better, uh, you know, just focus on today. You know, this is Tuesday. Y'all, this is Monday. This is Tuesday, and uh, so have a great Tuesday practice. Uh, uh, and again, do what we can while we can, so that we can't, you know, we won't wish that we would have when we could have. And so, you know, get our guys to really understand and buy into. Uh, you're never going to regret giving everything you got, and so that means your preparation should matter every single day. So that's kind of where our focus is. But we expect again a, a great TC f football team to come in here. Uh, just what you've seen from them the last few weeks, man. It's gone down to the wire, down to the last couple of drives. It's a team that um, is rallied behind, you know, uh, their freshman quarterback. He's playing, you know, as good as anybody in, in, in our conference and probably around the country right now. And uh, so we're going to have to have a great week and a great game plan. Okay, Chris Williams, Parma. Yeah, Coach, the tail end of a long season, as you mentioned, how's the energy level? How's the morale? How is the focus just with all the highs and lows personally? and as a team that they've gone through this season? I think it's great. Like I said, our guys, they, they show up here with a great attitude. They like to come to the facility, like to hang out. Uh, they stay late. They come in early. Uh, practice is fun. Uh, it's tough. It's demanding. But guys got a great spirit and energy to them. Uh, you know, that's, you know, I know that kind of sounds cliche and all that, but this is a group. They like it. And uh, they value each other. We've got really good, strong relationships. Uh, with both their teammates and their coaches, and, and they're excited about what's in front of them. You know, lots at stake. This is, you know, uh, for several guys, this is this is it for them here. You know, got a chance to be undefeated at home. Uh, got a chance to you know, enhance and improve our opportunity uh, for postseason play. Uh, you know, this is a group of, of players on this team that are again highly invested. They put in a tremendous amount of work. So, uh, you know. Finish matters, and you know we're all defined by how we finish, right? It's not how you start, it's how you finish, and so uh, finishing strong is something we take a lot of pride in, and through their training, and mentally, physically, spiritually, uh, and, and so I think that they value that, you know, opportunity uh, as well, and uh, and then we got a lot of young players trying to continue to create, you know, value for themselves and opportunity for themselves too. That's a, so we got a great blend of those those kind of guys. So. They recognize you don't get to play this game forever. Um, you never know when the last day is, so you value every opportunity. You only get to play 12 guaranteed games a year. So this is a mature team that, that sees the value in that. Okay, we've got time for one more. Um, James Jackson, middle. Coach, you talked about kind of the, the high difference that some of the TCU players have over. I mean, how do you combat some of like, you know, the defensive side going back going out? Good technique, good positioning. Um, good awareness, good fundamentals uh, through the strain, you know, the, uh, the, the back end of the play. I always say you got to win early to win late. So 
uh, within the, the play, whatever the play is, you know, four to six seconds. You got to win early to win late, and uh, so uh, I think all of those things are important. And, uh, it's a game of leverage. It's a game of, of physicality, and even when a, uh, a DB and a receiver, a tight end and a backer, a safety, or uh, things of that nature, or you know, there's a physicality. Uh, it's not just the run game. You know, it's straining at the top of a route. You know, in and out of breaks, you know, uh, having functional strength and playing with leverage, and, you know, playing with good pad level, all those things, everything matters. Again, you're going against good players. You can't have, you know, bad technique and expect to win. So I think it starts with that and understanding alignments, all those kind of things. You know, and then, you, you know, just do your one of 11. There's 10 other guys. You're not out there on the line by yourself, but this is a game of matchups, you know, and you got to you win your matchups. You expect to win the game, you got to win your matchup. And, uh, so when your fair share of those uh, is important, and, uh, technically, mentally, physically. Thank you, Coach. Great, thanks.